Good evening. My name is Clemente Capello, and if you're European, I'm here to recruit you. Today, I will be talking about how one single idea can change Europe. I will explain why it's important to change Europe from a bureaucracy to a democracy, to have one president elected by all Europeans. The idea is very simple. The European Union currently has three presidents. None of them are elected. All of them are appointed by a variety of different entities. I am proposing that we have one single president that is elected. We're experiencing a deadly pandemic that has instilled fear in us, fear to be around people, fear to go out, fear of the future. However, major crisis brings major change. What kind of future should we expect? A big reset? Well, let me tell you something about the future. Your future depends mostly on you and what you do. Someone wiser than me once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. The future remains unwritten now more than ever. It starts small. Have you ever noticed by, that by doing one thing a little bit differently, it changes everything? Maybe it's a smile. Maybe you start exercising. It makes a difference. Suddenly people smile back, or maybe you start feeling better. Now imagine if thousands or millions did something. For example, you clean up after you had a picnic on the beach or in the park. If we all do the same, the beach or the park will be clean. Certain things only work if we all do our bit. That is the same with communities and democracy. The more people get involved, the more responsibilities are taken on, the stronger our community. Just like plants need water, Democracy needs you. There is something you can do today that can change the course of history and the future of your community. This action will take you less than five minutes. All you need to do is sign a petition, but it will only be successful if most of us do it, just like keeping that beach or that park clean. Let me show you a few practical examples of what the European Union does. It keeps borders open. It does research into space. It builds bridges, or rather co-finances tunnels. This is between Germany and Denmark. But when you start looking at how Europe makes its decision, it's a little bit more tricky. This is from Wikipedia. It's a bit messy. Even the names are tricky. There is both a European Council and a Council of the European Union. You basically elect your local member of parliament that then supports a government. The government negotiates with other European governments what the commission will look like but at the same time, the, the national governments will continue to lead Europe through the council. Well, one of the councils. It's all pretty confusing. Besides, your influence as a citizen is basically zero. You experience the same feeling when you're on the phone waiting in line for the call center. Your call is important to us. If you've been waiting 15 minutes or more, let's be frank, your call is not that important. Europe is a little bit the same. Your voice doesn't really matter. What is a vote anyways? In a large election with millions of voters, a vote is essentially a message. I want Europe to care more about the environment, therefore I'll be voting for the green candidate, for example. I want more jobs. 
I want more social justice. Whatever your desires, for your message to work, it needs to be direct. Otherwise, your message gets lost. When I was a kid, I used to play this game called Chinese Whispers. Basically, you have a group of, say, 10 people, all whispering in the ear of the neighbor. Their neighbor then needs to whisper the exact same message to their neighbor, and so on. So after four or five rounds, the message gets completely transformed. So Freddie likes Anna, becomes Daniel likes vanilla ice cream. As your message goes through different rounds of committees, nomination, appointments, it loses its meaning. It basically gets lost in translation. So the whole European system is ineffective because it's unelected. The issue is simple. Would you rather decide for yourself or do you want to delegate someone who delegates someone who then delegates someone that delegates someone to set the direction of Europe? I want you to take ownership of Europe because it is your community. You may feel more connected to your country or to your city or to your football team or to the type of music you listen, but you're also European. I want you to take ownership of Europe because it was yours in the first place, but it was hidden so well under so many layers of bureaucracy that you just forgot about it. It's time for you to set the direction of Europe and elect its president. Why should you care? Why, why is this important? We all have our own problems in our daily lives. Well, Europe oversees economic policy. It guarantees basic freedom, protects your fundamental rights, allows you to travel freely around the continent unless there is a pandemic, protects your privacy, makes sure the food you eat is safe and helps protect the environment. Over 80% of rules and regulation originate from European directives. Whether you care or not, Europe decides on your behalf and spends approximately 250 euros per person of your tax money. What goes on in Brussels has probably a bigger impact on your life than whatever your local or national authorities do. But beyond this, Europe is something else. When you talk to a Latvian soldier protecting the EU border with Russia, and you ask a Polish person what's it like to be discriminated because of their gender, or a Hungarian journalist that cannot voice her opinions freely, who's backing them up? For them, words like rights, democracy, freedom are not vague concepts. They're the only thing separating them from abuse. Whether you want more Europe or less Europe, we can improve it by making it accountable and democratic. An engaged community, a successful democracy, is often what separates free, prosperous society from poor, violent dictatorship. Hence, we need to fix Europe by electing its president. This is about the difference between the Europe we want and the Europe we have. It's also the difference between your Europe and their Europe. Now, Ted insists I present the full story. So here are the most common reasons why electing one guy or one president instead of three appointed ones is a bad idea. The first reason is people are idiots. It's common knowledge that many people think we're just too dumb to vote. The argument is popular in Brussels. They view themselves as competent technocrats and don't want election or referendum 
to get in the way. These guys are so smart, they came up with strict regulation on the shape of bananas. I will spare you some of their other ideas. The truth is, as Churchill brilliantly summed it up, democracy is the worst form of government, except all the other ones. Another criticism to this project is that bigger states have more people, they will play a dominant role, leaving smaller states left behind in the discussion. That's a fair point, but it really depends on how the rules are implemented. If you use the US as an example, throughout the presidential campaign, California and New York, the two most populous and richest states, play a very limited role in the elections, whereas Places like New Hampshire and Ohio, due to the way the elections are run, play a much bigger role. So how you write the rules and how you implement a democratic elected single president is really what matters. To make sure everybody has their own voice represented. The final point is the cultural differences and the language barrier. This is a big one. Although more than half Europeans actually speak more than one language, a quarter of them actually are trilingual or more. Italy, for example, have, has a French speaking and a German speaking regions, yet they all seem to support the same national team during the World Cup. They all sit together in parliament. You always had differences um, city versus countryside, younger versus older generation. Any country will have different groups. We may even eat differently, but we all share common interests. What about the advantage of electing the president of Europe? It cuts red tape and costs. Imagine the amount of paper going around between the council, the commission, and the rotating presidency all translated in more than 20 languages. It simplifies, meaning the system becomes more transparent. You know what happens when the system is more transparent? Transparency is the best tool against corruption. So it limits corruption. It limits on your influence from lobbies and other foreign powers that seek to divide us. Democracy also provides a natural feedback loop. The policies that work continue. The policy that don't work get voted out. Democracy legitimizes action. Many people don't necessarily disagree with Europe's action. But they hate the fact that their, their voices are simply ignored. Voting means your voice matters. Voting is also empowering. And you feel closer if you're given the chance to make a difference, to decide. It means that once you're involved with choosing, you start caring, you start having a stake in its success. Europe has come a long way. 80 years ago, we were fighting against each other with millions of casualties, bloody conflicts in the Balkans finished barely 20 years ago. After the Second World War, a few visionaries started working on a common project. The biggest success of Europe has been peace. This is the graph showing wars and peace and the European Union. But the history of the European Union is not only about wars. More importantly, it's about a long, constant struggle towards our ideals. Self-determination, meaning that you're free to become an independent nation. The resistance against totalitarian regimes, like 1968, whether in Prague against the Soviet tanks or in Athens against the military government. The campaign for women's right to vote, 
Cyprus granting it only 1960. You had Solidarność in Poland opening up the mighty Soviet bloc and freeing Eastern Europe. More recently, the anti-corruption march in Romania, among many other campaigns across Europe. Today, there is a wall around the European institutions. It is a wall dividing the decision makers from the citizen. That wall is bureaucracy. And just like Berlin in 1989, we need to tear down that wall. Bringing democracy to Brussels is a natural evolution of past struggles. It is a battle for true democracy, our cherished ideal that we've been pursuing here in Europe for the past 2,500 years. Do what you believe in. Well, this is what I believe in. And I think some of you also understand how electing the president of Europe would bring Europe together. We have a common market. We have a common cu currency, common borders. But we need a common spirit, a European soul. Mozart, Leonardo da Vinci, Marie Curie, Einstein, and according to my son, Cristiano Ronaldo. We have a unique legacy. The only way to celebrate our legacy is to build a new one. When united, Europe is an exceptional team. It ranks number one when it comes to Nobel Prize winners, Olympic medals, or UNESCO World Heritage Sites. You name it. So today, I ask you to set aside our differences and share our common destiny. It's about having one president who's accountable to 500 million people. It's about transparency instead of corruption. It's about democracy instead of bureaucracy. It's about unity instead of division. It's about a new European dream. But more importantly, it's about you. It's about your right to decide your own future. You are Europe. Thank you. And if you can, please sign the petition.